This episode of the CMO Suite is brought to you by Connectivity Strategies, specializing in micro-targeted, full-funnel media strategies for clients like WWE, Corona, First Watch, Coke, and more. Connectivity Strategy, National Strength, Localized Approach. Visit them at ConnectivityStrategy.com and Toomey. Product quality and selection are key attributes that have made Toomey the leading international business accessory and travel lifestyle brand. Simply put, there's no product made like Toomey. I can tell you that because I have the bag. I've got the suitcase. Charlie Cole hooked me up last year. Uh, for more information, visit them at Toomey.com. And finally, No Kid Hungry. We are also proud that we make a contribution in the name of each of our 2019 guests to No Kid Hungry. Your tax-deductible donation will help us provide vulnerable kids in America with nutritional meals so they can focus on being kids, not being hungry. For more information, visit nokidhungry.org. If you can, start the show. You're in the CMO Suite, the podcast for marketers who want to be in the know, presented by Connectivity Holdings. Welcome to the CMO Suite. I'm your host, Sean Halter. We are incredibly excited today. We have the CMO for Burger King, Fernando Machado. Thanks, Fernando, for joining us. My pleasure to be with you, Sean. All right, don't forget, Fernando, get right up on that microphone because I am ridiculously loud. And we've got Law Smith with, uh, with us as well. Law is doing my production, so thank you, Law, for joining us here. If you've listened to the show, you know I mentioned Law from time to time. He likes to take credit for getting me to start this podcast, although, I, I don't know, maybe I'll give him 25% credit. That's good uh, enough. It's good enough. 20, you know, 25 is better than nothing. Am I right? For sure. So, Fernando, uh, listen, uh, we are excited to have you on the show. I know we chased you down a little bit. Finally, I think, you know, you were like, hey, look, if you're willing to come to Miami, it's beautiful here, right? That's what you say every day. And here we come down to Miami, and what do we have? Slightly cloudy skies. It's, uh, it's an exception. It is an exception Just to the rule. you at home. You, you're, that is true. It is an exception to the rule. And so what we did was, uh, you guys are in a brand new space, right? Pretty much, yes, like three months. Only three months. And so what we did was instead of shooting the amazing skyline, we actually turned the tables, literally turned the tables. We took one of your tables. Yep. If you are listening to this on uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, if you're listening to this maybe on Vimeo or if you're listening to this on iTunes, pop over to, to the YouTube feed because the space that we were in is absolutely amazing. We literally lifted one of their tables up. We moved it over here without asking so we could get a great shot of this amazing building. And you're in a brand new space. Yeah, we're very happy uh, to be in this office. We moved around three months ago. We're still settling in, to be honest. I mean, the test kitchens on the second floor are still like uh, getting finalized, but it's a much more fun space. I think it's a space that reflects our personality uh, as a brand and the culture of our company. It's like it's a completely open office. There is absolutely no office. You can see like everyone uh, from the CEO to like uh, the, the the teams that work for Burger King, the teams that work for Popeyes. Uh, it's a very uh, inclusive, informal, fun uh, space. So we're very happy to be here. I know, I feel like, Fernando, I want to get back into your back history for a little bit because I know you've had a really interesting journey uh, to get here. But I feel like one of the things that really excited me the most about uh, having you uh, with us today is the fact that you are so prevalent out in social media. And I know that a lot of CMOs are out there. They're trying to make sure that they're in that space. It's such an important space for brands now. But you are front and center in a lot of ways uh, when it comes to that. And so I'm sure it's great to be kind of in a new space in some ways and be able to kind of just rework that palette to some extent because it's all art right whether it's the art of building a brand whether it's the art of being down in the test kitchen and i know you were kind enough to kind of walk me through that and look at kind of the vision of what that's going to look look like it all sets the tone for a brand doesn't it it, it does uh, and we end up like receiving uh, lots of our franchisee partners here uh, we have our agencies coming in all the time uh, and we want to make sure that uh, the space where we work kind of like reflects who we are uh, and I think that this space, uh, and, and that makes me very excited, um, uh, does a much better job of reflecting who we are than our previous building. So, uh, so again, just talking about the art aspect of it and the fact that you're in a new space, uh, do you feel like, uh, this may seem like a strange question, but do you feel like as a marketer you yourself are an artist? Is that a fair uh, assertion of kind of what, what a CMO has to be at, at some point? I mean, you've won some amazing awards in the past, and obviously we know you're not in Photoshop yourself and doing all that. But really, you're a director and an artist, wouldn't you say? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I think that... Um, uh, don't think be that, modest. No, no, no. I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I think that uh, the way I see it is more like uh, the work that we do uh, in marketing, when it's well done, uh, I feel it's always a combination of logic and magic. Uh, logic so, and magic. Yes, there is like uh, all the part that we need to deliver the results and the profitability and increase like the right brand attributes uh, and increase brand awareness. We have like a, a gazillion uh, of metrics that we uh, that we need to think about and that we need to uh, deliver against. Um, but 
and we have research and we have so many data points like uh, we are really strong in analytics here uh, at Burger King and at the same time we know that uh, creativity at least we, that's how we see it is our, our, one of our competitive advantages um, and uh, and you need to be able to uh, come up with stuff that's different uh, come up with things that will truly connect with people uh, and will get noted um, and, and to do that you need a bit of the magic you know like everyone is looking at the same data uh, so if you're not creative and if you don't try to do something different if something that we require you to be a bit daring uh, chances are that you'll fall on the commonplace and that will probably not yield uh, you feel comfortable about it but it will probably not yield the best result yeah and so uh, you know so, so I don't think I don't see myself necessarily as an artist uh, I do think that uh, I am a creative person and uh, and I work with people who are probably much more creative than I am uh, to make the the, the brand uh, be what it is uh, a brand that's kind of like always doing something different, uh, always innovating, always like uh, uh, being playful and creating uh, waves of pop culture with the campaigns that we do. Well, but geez, you know, again, speaking of pop culture, we want to get back into your history, but let's talk about the Super Bowl, right? Uh, I'm 49. I try to work this in every episode. I'm 49. My club age is 39. I'm in Miami, so do I get to take <laughs> another couple years off of that? Law's going to give me the high sign on that, yes or no? It's probably a no. So... I can't remember, I've watched almost every Super Bowl probably since I was a little kid. I can't remember a time where Burger King was top of mind, where it was creating that, you know, outside conversation. And I think to me what's really interesting about the dynamic of, you know, there used to be the ad meter in USA Today and you'd get a little bit of buzz. But you had people who were talking about the Andy Warhol spot that didn't even watch the Super Bowl this year. Well, I think people are still talking about the Andy Warhol spot, which is, uh, which is truly amazing. Uh, we, we haven't been on the Super Bowl for the past 13 years. Uh, we were back this year, uh, and there was not, it, it was not a brief, hey, let's go back to the Super Bowl. We don't necessarily brief that way. Uh, I think that the, the, the brief, which is our ongoing brief that we have, is let's do things that elevate the Whopper, which is our main uh, product, and, uh, uh, and, and showcase the iconic nature uh, of the Whopper. So when, uh, when David Miami, which is uh, our, our kind of like our key partner agency when um when they came up and said hey look at this video you know like it's a video that was shot in 1982 by a danish director you can laugh his name uh and, and shows Andy Warhol eating a water for four minutes and 20 seconds give or take but that's pretty much like a, what it is uh we were like oh my god is is that really Andy Warhol? like why well, like w how did this happen uh, and it sparked like a whole conversation and curiosity on our own team about like uh, how, how did that happen um, and, and then we thought, man, like we, we have this amazing thing uh, in like our hands, like brands would die for uh, something to, like have that. A, to have something like that. Yeah. How can we leverage it? Uh, and this is like two years ago. <laughs> uh, it took us like more than a year just to negotiate the usage rights uh, because we had to negotiate with the Warhol Foundation. We, we, they were awesome. Uh, we had to negotiate with, uh, uh, with the son of the director who shot the film. So it was a long negotiation uh, because... Uh, they, they want to know like how it's going to be used, why. Uh, like uh, it's like the money side of the equation was actually a small part of the conversation. Uh, they they are there to protect uh, Angie's work, uh, and when they realize that actually we are very respectful of that work, we don't even want to edit uh, the film because we didn't. Uh, the, the 45 seconds that we are is kind of like the first 45 seconds of the film. They were on it with us. Um, and then it was a whole discussion about where, how, how do you leverage this? And then we thought that because of the nature of the film, which is kind of like unboxing meets ASMR, but done in 1982, shows that Angie was clearly ahead of his time. Um, let's, like, the, the film is a, it's what we call like a killer. Uh, it's like a silent assassin. So let's put that thing on the most cluttered uh, environment. Uh, and see what happens. Exists. And see what happens because like, we know that um, uh, differently than in normal situations, people are paying attention to the ads on the Super Bowl. It's the second main reason why people watch uh, the Super Bowl, which sure. is crazy. So we know that a lot, lots of people are probably not going to know who that guy is, but in, people are always watching a group and someone in the group will know or will be like, is that really Andy Warhol? And then Google. Uh, to see what the hell was that. Uh, so it created a massive debate and, and helped elevate the Whopper to the iconic nature that it should have uh, because you have someone who is incredibly iconic eating the product. And so, you know, that's 
part of it, again, if you're listening in the podcast uh, via iTunes, I just would ask you to go and look at the YouTube version. You know, I, I don't know if it's iconic for me to kind of do the same thing. I mean, I won't, I won't sit here for four minutes, but I, I will say how amazing these products are. So, look, I'm not asking for you to put me in the Super Bowl, you know, <laughs> some year, uh, Fernando, but... Um, Listen, I've got my, my, my own BK. I, I got Wait, this down in the kitchen. It's a double cheeseburger. It's a double cheeseburger, yeah. yeah. Mm. Am I allowed to eat on a podcast, Law? Oh, Law said that's a no. In a Burger King podcast, you can at least take a bite. I'm allowed to at least take a bite. All right, that's fair. Thank you very much. So my next question for you is how would you get your start? Where did you grow up, by the way? Uh, well, I'm Brazilian. You can probably tell that by my funny accent. Um, I was born in Rio. Uh, in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, uh, and I lived everywhere in Brazil. My dad was uh, a professor uh, at the Army, a uh, civil engineer professor, so I was born in Rio, moved to the Amazon uh, when I was a little kid. Really? Yes. Uh, it's crazy, right? I have Do you remember really that? I vaguely remember having a big turtle, uh, and have, uh, and I do have some really funny pictures on the Amazon River and, and stuff like that. Uh, which is pretty cool. What, uh, did you did you live there for a while because he was in the army? Yes, I, I lived there for like two, three years uh, when I was a kid. Whoa! Yeah, uh, and then we moved to Bahia, which is the northeast of Brazil. We moved back to Rio, back to Bahia, uh, and then I did my college in the countryside of São Paulo in Campinas, and uh, and then I moved to São Paulo. What uh, brought you to, to the work. U.S.? So I I started working. I studied mechanical engineering. Believe it or not. Uh, and, From uh, mechanical engineering to CMO. Exactly. I uh, mean, that's the right path, though, right? I don't know. Probably, probably not. <laughs> but like, uh, because because I was I was very interested in art, um, and uh, for I, it, it was not a conscious thing. It's not like I, when I was a kid, oh, I'm very interested in art. Like I just like drawing. <laughs> yeah, that's the reality. Yeah. yeah? Um, and um, and I used to draw all the time uh, at school. Uh, so I decided to study mechanical engineering because it made a lot of sense. I was really good with math and, and stuff like that. And my dad was an engineer, uh, and uh, there was no marketing school uh, back when I was a kid. Uh, so I studied mechanical engineering, and I got an internship in Unilever uh, in a factory. So I worked for two years in the shop floor of a factory uh, in Sao Paulo. So that's interesting because uh, you ended up at Lun Unilever in the marketing yeah, I, department. I just stayed. Um, just stayed, yeah. Uh, yeah, like so th the first time I've heard the word marketing, I was in the factory. The marketing team came to do a presentation about one of our key laundry uh, detergent brands that we used to produce in the factory. And I went to the presentation and I thought, oh my God, this is so cool. You know, like uh, there is a big world out there. Like they, uh, they do advertising, they do design, and they love drawing. And like I think I, I consider myself like creative. Uh, and they also do the business side of life. And I, I'm good with numbers. So maybe... Uh, I can do better at something that kind of like uses, uh, takes the most out of both of sides of my brain. Isn't it weird to think about that day? How much one single yep. day can really yep. impact and change your entire yep. trajectory? Look, I, I didn't know uh, what an MBA was. I didn't know what marketing was. I didn't know who Philip Kotler was. I knew nothing. Uh, but what I felt was that there was something there that maybe I could do well, uh, and it would probably be more interesting than the stuff I was doing uh, in the factory. So sometimes, you know, this show is predominantly uh, meant for, you know, VPs of marketing, CEOs, other CMOs that are maybe at a, at a high level. It's an opportunity for us to be able to talk to other marketers and give them really uh, an avenue to be able to listen to how challenging some of this stuff is, how frustrating things can be. But at the same time, we know that uh, people who own companies or uh, young kids who are just kind of getting their start in this business may also listen to this podcast as well. And so to me, that last point was an interesting one, especially because, again, your life changed based on a single day. And so if you're out there, whether you're a CMO and you're frustrated because you have to learn programmatic or biddable or whatever the newest, latest shiny penny is, um, or you're somebody who's just getting into it, every day can impact some of the decisions that you make. And if you come with the right attitude and you just try to soak as, as much information as you can, I'm not saying you know, you're going to end up being the global CMO for Burger King someday, but you never know what trajectory that will take you in. No, I, I think it's good learning for life. Yeah. You know, like uh, it's not just for work. Uh, be open, you know, listen. I mean, opportunities present themselves every day in front of you. And sometimes a difference in your mood uh, will make a difference on whether you're going to tap into that opportunity or not. And it sounds like you're always open to doing just that. You're always open to, to soaking up new information. There's, again, a weird kind of three degrees of, of separation. I've got a friend. 
Katie Hale, who lives in Tampa, and she's part of the Miami Art School. I think that's what it is. And I think you just joined as either a chair or something with yeah, that. Am I right? Miami, Am I close? Miami Art School. Yeah, Miami Art School. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's funny because I was telling her that I was coming uh, up here, and I, I was trying to brag a little bit like, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to Miami to interview <laughs> Fernando Machado. And she's like, oh, yeah, we're doing stuff with him already. I was like, dang it. And then I was talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Matt Wilson, who, uh, who runs an agency group down here. I think it's called 400 Degrees that does some work yeah. with you guys. 500 Degrees. I was so close. I was 100, 100 Degrees, degrees off. more, yeah. Uh, 100 <laughs> Degrees more. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, I know you work with them. And he's like, oh, yeah, we talk, you know, we kind of basically talk with them all the time. Yeah. And so it's interesting. You have all these different, especially with, with kind of Matt's group, and you were talking a bit about David as well. You have all these outside uh, uh, groups in some ways that just have to work with organizations of your size. It's impossible probably for you to have everything you need in-house all the time. You'd miss some things, I would assume, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, like, I, I don't like much in-house, um, mainly because, I think that we have a certain culture here, uh, which is very focused on certain things. Um, and, uh, and I think that because of that and because we work all every day together on this beautiful building, we end up g becoming more similar to each other, mm -hmm. honestly. Almost I, insular yeah. in some ways. Exactly. And, uh, and I want people who think differently th than us, who act different, who dress different, uh, who listen to different music and who are working with other brands. Uh, because the, all the agencies, they have more than one brand, uh, and can come up with, I think that inc that increases the chances of us doing something that different. will be different, because there is more diversity of thinking. Do you think some of that in-housing is coming about simply because, back to your point of the fact that we have all these data points now, and it's data, 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 and everything has to, 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 to bleed back to sales or to data, uh, is, is there some... Uh, uh, push back to in-housing because people are just frustrated that maybe they're not getting some of the information that they need from agencies, especially in the biddable space. You know, we were talking to somebody the other day, and I won't say the agency that they're working with, but a pretty big agency, and they were like, we asked him for, you know, just for something more than a click-through report on this, you know, multi-million dollar spend, and it took them two weeks to kind of get us something. And so yeah. is there is there a level of trust that has to be there, and at the same time, everybody needs to understand that we're all still kind of learning this a little bit along the way? I think that like uh, when it comes to data and analytics, we do have a lot of that in-house. Um, the type of agencies and partners beyond agencies um, that work with us, they tend to be as nimble and as fast as we are. You Speed. Know I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, and like uh, understand the sense of urgency, I mean, Burger King is kind of like it's closer to being like a retail business than being like a consumer goods. It ends up being a mix of two, the two. But like I get on my cell phone the sales from Burger King globally twice a day. You know, like uh, no pressure. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and we know when something's working, when something's not working. In consumer goods, it's tougher because you are selling to the Walmarts or the Targets or the Walgreens. And it will take some time until you truly know whether that product is working or not. Here, it's like, if something's not working, we fix it immediately. So uh, it cannot be the old school uh, madman traditional model. There's not a big to area for drinks ever by your desk or anything um, like that. I, I wish, uh, but like uh, it, it can't be that way, you know. Like, uh, and, and I think that when I think about the partners that we have, you mentioned 500 degrees. They are great partner in terms of all the merchandising we do, uh, market tasks, materials, uh, photography. Uh, I mentioned David uh, Miami. I mean, they're awesome agency. Like they're nearby. Uh, we've been working together for a long time. We have had a massive success, but it's very nimble, very agile. Uh, it doesn't feel like an old school advertising agency. It's a much more personal, um, agile uh, relationship, you know. And social seems to be a big thing for you. You specifically, personally, you are extremely actively involved socially. I see you on LinkedIn all the time. That's my, that's my social media of choice, and I'm on Instagram a lot as well. What do you love personally about social media? Um, I, 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 I use different channels of social media for different things. I mean, you touched on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, to me, was like I have a, a moment of revelation a couple of years ago. I used to never post anything uh, on LinkedIn. Never. I used to go, make sure that my profile was updated, uh, and maybe take a look on some news and stuff. But I never really posted anything. And then one day, I was visiting uh, one of our restaurants here in Miami, actually, in South Beach. Uh, and we took a picture of the crew members uh, of the restaurant. And I, I said, you know what, I will post that. And then I posted. That post back then 
became the most engaged, uh, uh, the, the highest engagement level of anything I have ever posted in my life, uh, personally. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so that post was more liked and more shared than any of the posts of with my friends on Facebook. I think it's because we also we have a yearning to try to tie our business life and our personal life together some way somehow because ultimately. This is still a business about knowing people and liking people and trusting yeah. people. And for people that want to understand how you do what you do, um, there's no other place for them to kind of do that. Building your own personal yeah. brand is something that you're doing right now. And I know even like when we talk to Jen Say to some extent, some CMOs are like, well, you know, it's about the brand and it should be. But you're also building a personal brand that allows your brand to be something more than just a logo that sits on a bag. Yeah. Like, um, but uh, what I, in my case, what I didn't realize to be honest with you, it was kind of like the number of people that work for Burger King or that are related to Burger King who are following me. You know, I never looked into that uh, because like o o on that post that I was referring to, when that happened, I, I went and looked, who the hell are these people? Sure. Uh, and they were like crew members, restaurant managers. Like, And then I was like, oh my God, like these people are here and they... And they crave for content because if they didn't, that post would not uh, achieve such a su huge success. So from that day on, I started to be more active on LinkedIn, for instance. And I started to look at every single thing that's posted about Burger King. And when it makes sense, I comment, I like. I'm very uh, active uh, on that platform because of that. And believe me, as a host, I appreciate that. I posted literally a note yesterday, like, I'm going to be in Miami. We're going to talk to Fernando. You were like, either yes, or I'm looking forward to it. And then literally, like... You're an influencer, even though you may not feel that way like sometimes. And, yeah, they come my, in droves. With my mom, I may be an influencer. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see your mom like that post. Yeah. Listen, we've got about uh, eight more minutes, nine more minutes with you. We appreciate the time. Uh, we hope that we'll get a chance to come back and meet with you once the test kitchen is all done. I've got two final quick questions for you, if you don't mind. That went pretty fast, didn't it? It did. Uh, next time we'll do an hour, and then just, you know, it'll be a personal hour. We'll send a half an hour. We'll keep a half an hour for the show, and we'll give the other half hour to your mom. Done. Uh, she, will, she will watch that over and she'll over. She'll be so excited. Yeah. So... Uh, we talked a bit about what you love about this business. Um, what do you what do you find frustrating about this this business? Um, what I find frustrating about this business, um, I think that it, to to some extent, maybe because of the type of personality that we have uh, here, um, uh, sometimes I'm frustrated with the fact that I wish some things were even faster. Knowing that, we are already pretty damn fast. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's like, for instance, we, uh, I do, like, it's part of my responsibilities to work on the design of the restaurants, just as an example. And we have some amazing design. You post those, by the way, a lot, which yeah. is great because they're beautiful. Some yeah, of them are really like we have incredible. some really cool stuff. But it will take years until I can or we can um, uh, make a, a, a significant impact across the whole system because it takes years for people to renovate the restaurants. You know, it's not like changing the ad uh, on TV, you know, like so. Some things, uh, despite the fact that uh, we ha we know what the solution is, it, it just need it just takes time uh, for you to 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 cause the impact um, uh, you would like to have. What do you wish you knew more about uh, in the space? What I wish I knew more about. Literally, asked Bon and Bo in, that, in, in and, he, and he said space. <laughs> uh -huh. In marketing, what do you what do you feel like? Gosh, if I only had more time, I wish I could learn more about this? Um, I wish, I think I wish I were, um, I, I wish I knew how to code, <laughs> to be honest oh, no with kidding. you. No uh, kidding. Uh, and I, I, I don't know why I haven't even tried to learn that. Uh, I have this conundrum probably, which is like, oh, maybe I'm, I, I'm too old for that now. Uh, and, uh, and I will never be great at that. Uh, but like, uh, I wish, and I know that's not necessarily marketing, uh, but maybe if I knew how to do that, I, I think I had a huge competitive advantage when I started working marketing because I was a mechanical engineer. I was able to know the numbers inside and out faster than the people who had marketing experience. I was able to discuss with the factory uh, about a product better than any marketeer back then because I was a mechanical engineer. And coding is a whole new language. Yes. It's and, like and Japanese I, and or I any language. I don't speak that. Yeah. Like I, I, I know really well UX. Uh, I know design, I know the brand, da, da, da. I know to some extent what can be done, cannot be done in systems, 
but I don't know how to code myself. I keep begging my daughter, who's really good at Photoshop, I keep begging her to go into coding. I'm like, Delaney, we will have a permanent job for you, please. It's so hard to find great U.S.-based coders. And speaking of kids, uh, listen, I wanna, uh, we've got five minutes left. I want to talk about something personal, if I can, for yeah. just a second. So uh, uh, this show is going to air uh, about three weeks from the time that we've recorded it. And by then, you'll have something very special and different about your life. True, yes. I'm getting married at the beginning of April. Getting married at the beginning of April. So this episode is going to air around April 29th. So you'll already be like three or four weeks into this old married life. Pretty much. I'll probably have a tan from the honeymoon. You'll probably have a tan. And so tell us about that. Tell us about, uh, again, we don't want to get too personal in your personal no, life. No, it's something good. you're not willing to share. Uh, but so she, she's awesome. Her name is Anika. She finally said yes. yes she did. Well, I mean, she, she, if you ask her, her version, she'll probably say that it took too long to propose. How, but long yes. did, how long did you guys date? Like for like three years or so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, she, uh, t three, four years. Um, and she, uh, she's Australian. So the wedding uh, will be in Sydney. So I'm very excited about that. She flew to Sydney today, uh, by the way. I'm flying on the 28th, uh, I think. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. It was a challenge to organize the stuff from here. Uh, it would probably took a burden more on her than on me. Um, this is my way to say I'm sorry for that uh, <laughs> when she listens to the podcast. There you go. Uh, but like It'll be a post, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, very, very excited about, uh, about the wedding in Sydney. Uh, and we have like a very close friends and family there. So it'll be awesome. What are you most excited about when it comes to getting married? What I'm... Uh, I think it's like a, a different a, purpose in life no, or I think it's a sign of commitment. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, it need to be uh, something really, really special uh, for, for both of us. Uh, I think it's a sign of like the two families uh, coming together, kind of like, uh, you know, in an office. And so is all of your family going there to well, Australia? My mom will be there. Uh, my dad already passed away, uh, and her, her family will be there. It's okay. My, and her, her family will be there. So yeah. it should be Any good. brothers or sisters? My sister uh, can't come. Um, shame on her. Uh, but uh, No pressure. Yeah, yeah, no pressure. But she has uh, uh, two brothers, and they will both be there. And so your mom's coming. Yes. And you excited about that, I'm, I'm sure? I'm very excited about that, yeah. Uh, and where does your mom live now? Does she live in? She lives in Sao Paulo with my sister. With oh, your well, sister? She, they don't live together, but they both live in Sao Paulo. Do you get a chance to go back and see her much? I do. Like, I haven't been there for a year or so, which is rare. Uh, I'll be there, I think, in May. Uh, but she comes here pretty often. We're going to see each other in Sydney. So uh, I would say that my mom, she, no matter what, she will always say, like, uh, I wish we could spend more time together. You don't call me enough. Like it's the speech of it's yeah. all the moms agree on the same speech. So I, I do get that speech. And so your uh, your father passed. And again, I won't make you uh, talk about that. But you, I think you had said he was also an, a mechanical engineer, maybe he, himself. He was as a well. civil engineer. Yeah, a, a huge influence uh, on on, uh, on my life because I think that I got a taste for for math and numbers uh, coming from him. And he used to teach at the army school, like one of the largest uh, army. Uh, uh, universities uh, uh, in Brazil, in Rio. Was he able to see some of your success here? He was not at BK. He passed away like uh, around uh, 97. So it was uh, a while back. Uh, but like uh, he, he was able to see that I was in a good trajectory. I was always like very dedicated uh, at school. Uh, I didn't pay much attention on the classes, to be honest with you. I was drawing most of the time. Right. Uh, but I used to study a lot at home, and I always did uh, really well at school. Well, it's great, again, when our parents can at least see some of that. And uh, it's also a reminder that this, uh, you know, this is a, we're a small speck in a yeah. giant place, and maybe that's something that we need to remember as a bit of a takeaway some, some days when we're frustrated and we didn't get this project done or we didn't get this, this win with this uh, you know, a client that you were pitching, that ultimately we got to remember either our kids or our family or just um, how to take the day and just love the day. So, listen, that was 30 minutes, uh, uh, Fernando. Thank that you was fast, man. so incredibly much for coming, for making the time, for being such incredible uh, host for us, for allowing us to take your furniture and literally move <laughs> it around, uh, unbeknownst to you, until you came back out here. And so we wish you uh, incredible s uh, success and luck uh, with, uh, obviously, everything that you're doing uh, with Burger King, and obviously we wish you incredible luck with the new marriage. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to do this. If you want to find out more about Fernando Machado, all you got to do is just stalk him on LinkedIn, which is exactly <laughs> what we did. Like his posts, especially the ones that he may post about uh, his uh, journey here on the CMO Suite. And of course, uh, keep listening to the CMO Suite for some amazing guests coming up here in season two. Law, take us out of the show. Thanks for hanging out in the CMO Suite. <laughs> podcast for marketers who want to be in the know. Presented by Connectivity Holdings. You're a C-level manager. 
You shouldn't have to know the difference between behavioral or contextual targeting, but your agency should. Uconnect provides brands and biddable teams direct access to platforms like the Trade Desk, Google, Amazon, Facebook, OTT, and more. Their U.S.-based traders can train your in-house team or provide complete transparency with no minimums and CPM-based service pricing for true transparency, something Mighty Hive, The Trade Desk, and Centro simply don't offer. Tired of being the smartest one in the room? Reach out to Uconnex today for a free demo. Uconnex, the world's leader in true, transparent, biddable media.